testing one two three all right intro to Maya basics okay. now the majority of the time when we start Maya as a modeler the only thing I'm concerned about is polygons not too much splines or curved surfaces we'll get into that another time sculpting is not worth even looking at don't even bother with that okay now there's a way we can create things um, two ways that we can start to get primitives on screen so we can start adjusting them and modeling them that is we right up here we have our primitives on the far left top corner so we have sphere cube cylinder cone plane torus primitive uh, uh, pyramid and whatever that is okay select all that I'm just going to delete it another way we can create a primitive is by shift and far right mouse button hold down and there's the same things right there okay you can drag down and there's a cube okay now if I hit F on the keyboard what does it do it zooms directly in on that cube and allows me to now if I hold down alt orbit around the object see that or if I hold down alt middle mouse and I can pan okay so like we spoke about last week if I hold down spacebar this also gives me full access to everything in the program this is called the hotbox now remember what I said last week this is a lot of information on screen so we want to kind of get rid of it so if we go to hotbox controls show modeling modeling only you see how it made that a lot smaller yes good very essential right because you don't want all that information getting in the way okay now golden rule when you start to model you want everything to sit on top of the grid you see how right now it's sitting in the middle of the grid we don't want that okay we don't want that so what we can do is we can just hit W to move and place it right on the grid boom now it's sitting on the ground and this is essential for video games right because when I export it that center point right here that center grid point right here that is called the zero 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 right there are your three world league coordinates that will determine where the pivot point and where this object sits in the world okay so when a level designer goes to place something it's snapping to the grid floor of the world does that make sense okay cool cool lovely now notice here oh let me move this over <clears throat> there we go there we go no there we go yes and yes notice now over here we have selection lasso paint selection move scale and rotate so the top one selection is Q on the keyboard and that will help you select things right 
See how it drags it out in a rectangular manner? Yes? The next way, next one is lasso. So if you click on the lasso, see that? We're drawing a lasso. We just selected it. Everyone get that? Very nice. Now you can click in the screen and it will deselect the model. And the reason why you can tell you've got something selected is because it turns green, right? That, we'll get into it. Patience, young Padawan. Okay. Okay, master. Yeah. Now, paint selection underneath. Boom. Maybe not. That only works on a component mode, okay? When we paint select. So we will go over that. So if I select my object, and then I go into face mode, then I come to the paintbrush. See that? Now you can paint the selection. Okay? Let's talk about this, right? We are in selection, so if we select an object, we're selecting it at its what? Its highest component, the top component. There are a few more components underneath. All right? So if you just right click without doing anything else with your left hand, look what pops up, right? We get object mode, we get edge mode, we get verte uh, vertex, we get face, we get multiple, and we get UVs and UV shells. Okay? Does everyone know how to do that? To get to those components. Alright. These components are very important. We will come back to that. Now, if I select it, and I go W, this allows me to move, yes? So I can move it. The middle box here, the little golden box, allows you to move it what? Free form, yeah. So free form, okay? If I use the arrow, green arrow, that means I'm only uh, restricted to the Y the blue, the Z, and the red is the X, okay? The same would rotate, which is E. So if you click E, you will go into rotate mode. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? Rotating. Yes, sir. Question? Yeah, speak up. Yes. Ah. All right. So the same applies here. If you click in the middle and not on one of these lines, you see how you are moving it and rotating it free form, undo. If you restrain it to an axis right here, okay? Very cool. Does everyone know how to do that? All right then. Well, does everybody know how to rotate it to where it snaps every 15 degrees? Or every five degrees, okay? So watch this. If you hold down E, hold it down, and then click with your left mouse, look at that. New options. Discrete rotation. Click on that. Now it will snap. See that? 
It's snapping out of degrees. Do I need to show that again? Yes? All right, I select it, press E, hold it down, and then left click, and you will come up with an entirely different little menu. Yeah. Got it? Got it? Yep. Who does not have that? And now you will be able to snap. See? Anybody not have that? Basic mouse interface. All right. So each mouse click has different functionality when holding down certain buttons. You can access all kinds of craziness. It took me uh, a friend of mine that I worked with to show me how to really use Maya. And when I got to that point, it was like you don't even see the menus anymore pop up because I'm moving flying through the menus yeah this is how you want to get so you can create things without any issues without any problems okay alright so like I said E Hold down the left mouse button as well, and there you go. You get a bunch of different uh, things, okay? The same with W. If you were to hold down W and you come to the move tool, watch this. W and left mouse click, and now you see you get a bunch of different options. Same with R for scale. You hold down R and you left mouse click, you get a bunch of different options, okay? Very good. Very good. Okay. So now we need to address the component level of any shape and object, okay? The component level of something. This is where, without any clicking or any movement from the left hand, we right click, and there you go. We have object mode, face, uh, edge mode, vertex mode, face mode, and so on and so on. Now, boys and girls, what I would love for you to do is the top face right here, go to face mode, select that face, Everyone got the top face selected? Just one face, that's it. Now, right click. Actually, sorry, nope. Shift, right click, and you see a whole nother menu comes up that pertains 
to manipulating that face. So this is where now I can select extrude and boom. Boom. Okay. So, I've just extruded that box, right? Now watch this. If I hit G, that's the last thing. It repeats the last command. Hit G, and then move again. Boom. G, move again. And then the, 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 you see, the, you see the, uh, the arrows are for moving. If you hit the little square box, watch what happens to the center or the middle. It turns into an icon, and this is where you can scale out, scale in, so on, G, and we can move up again. Yes? Nice. Okay. This is how you extrude. This is how you make things. This is how you start to block things out. Yeah? Awesome. Hey, does anyone have the attendance sheet? Oh, you got it? Yeah. Hey, don't worry, it's coming around. It'll come around this way. Okay, so that's pretty cool, huh? Here, I, I can take that. Yeah. Right, so that's pretty cool. You can manipulate shapes and all that stuff. Okay, cool. Now watch this, guys. We can also keep extruding, but we don't have to just do it to a face. I want you to select the top face and then just hit delete. Okay, just delete it, get, ri get rid of it. Okay, now do this for me. I want you to come up to edge and select an edge. And you notice how the edge turns that kind of orange? Now shift and right click. Now we can extrude an edge out. Okay. G. G. Okay. Very cool. Does everyone get that? Mm -hmm. Everyone do it, do it. Mode. 
So that's right click, just don't hold down anything. There you go, select the edge. Now select one of these edges. There you go, you got everything nice one. Click on it. Now shift and right click. Now go down to edge, extrude edge, there you go. Now go to the blue arrow and pull it up. Okay? Now you're extruding an edge. Oh, I see. Yeah? Okay. A pen? Uh-uh. Oh, I have a pencil. Student, a pen is a pencil. <laughs> All right, cool. So this is how you start manipulating shapes, okay? Now, manipulating a shape like this, trying to manipulate a 3D shape is a little difficult. I'm going to now show you how to really start manipulating a shape 2D so you can turn it into 3D. Okay. All right. Lovely, lovely, lovely. She in this class? Are you in this class? Oh, yeah, I'm in this class. Okay. And did you sign? Yeah, I did sign. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. No problem. Sorry. Um. Right. Let's delete that, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to create, so yeah, just select all of it, delete it, don't be attached to it. It's garbage. Click on making a plane. Okay, so click the plane. Boom, there you go. As soon as it comes up, you will have a bunch of you'll have this little gizmo here. Okay? And turn that to one, and then hit tab, one. There you go. Say it again. Go speak up. Uh, let's do that again. Just hit the plane right here, and it should come up. It should pop up. Doesn't? All right. Let me show you a different way. Click on your plane, and right over here, every time you create one of these objects, you see how you have polygon plane one? You see you have the same controls over here in your channel box and layer editor. So if you click on that little channel box, you'll see that you have the same options right here on the right hand side. Okay? And here's where we can change it. One, one. Enter. Okay. So you should end up with a plane that is basically has no subdivisions. Okay. Everyone do that. Thank you. 
to the next one. So like he's changing numbers or he's just the tab? Alright, so we all have a plane, yes? Good. Select it and delete it. Hold on. Don't do it yet. We're waiting for someone to uh, turn it to 1-1. One, one. See, this is how you manipulate all of your primitives. You can basically, for any primitive, you can manipulate it down to its lowest form, okay? So, guess what, boys and girls? I want you to delete that. And then, everyone delete it. Just hit delete, delete, don't get attached to it. There you go. Everyone deleted it. Shift, right click, plane, and you see the where the plane is? Go into the little square box. And that little square box will pull up the options for that object. So you see where it says uh, width divisions and height divisions? Turn that to one, tab, one, tab, and then go apply and there you go close it and you see it's created the same exact thing for you everyone do that yes yes sir Returned with what? Just yes, without the subdivisions. Because now you're saying, hey, every time I create this plane, I only want it to come in one by one subdivision. Right? That way you're not changing it every time you're creating it. Okay? Now, let's do something a little groovy. Let you guys kind of run a little wild here. Watch this, watch me. This is how I start my modeling. Start everything with a plane, right? So if I have this plane and I go to edge mode, this is how I start to like build out like car panels, hit G, drag it out again, G, drag it out again, boom, okay? This is how I start to create things, yeah? Let 
And then I can come here and scale it down a little here. Come here. Scale that down a little. Now I'm going to go over this again. So you see? Say it again. Some of you guys are going to have to speak up. Okay, so right click, go into edge mode. Now, shift, right click, edge, uh, extrude. There you go. Now I'm back out, back it up. Don't hold down shift, let's go. Now, hit G once. That's it, you don't hold it down, let's go. Drag it out again. Nope, nope, there you go, drag it out. There you go, now hit G again. And that's it. And now drag out again. There you go. See? When you hit G or Shift or anything like that, once you've done the command, let go of it. You don't need to hold it down. Okay? Right? So play with making a couple of shapes, right? So there's one. And by the way, watch this. Once I have one, I want you guys to do this. Control D and duplicate it. Control D, duplicate it. Control D, duplicate it. Say it again. That's an object mode? Yes, that's an object mode. Now I can come in and manipulate this one, right? So I can come here, shift. Extrude. There we go. Do it again. G. Extrude down. There you go. Okay? So it's almost like a fighter ship or something. Now watch this for very quickly. If you have a shape that you like, if you're in object mode, you can now just go like this, extrude. And there you go. There's your shape being created, right? By extruding it. Once you have the shape you like, you can extrude the entire shape.
Okay? Okay.
Now. Remember what I said about selecting things, you know? You have the ability to select an object. And if you want to select another object at the same time, hold down shift and click, shift and click. If you want to invert that selection, shift and drag over. Okay. Okay, good. Very good. Now, we're going to move on to something else, which is vitally important for Mark. So you have your cue, which is very important for Mark. Your plane, which we just dealt with. The next one is your cylinder. Click on the cylinder. Tell me, what do you see in your cylinder, right? But that cylinder for object creation or manipulation, it's too dense, if that makes any sense. It's too dense for manipulating. So we always adjust it, always adjust it. So with that in mind, how do you think you would make that an eight-sided cylinder instead of a 20-sided cylinder? Correct. Please do that for me right now. This is your first place. No, sir. You want to change the subdivision so it's inside instead of two sides. You want to make it inside. There you go. Just, just see that little window that popped up right there. Uh, you can you can make that window bigger. Watch, you see that little down in the corner? Drag it out, drag it out. Yeah, just like you did. Oh, yeah. Delete that. So go to object mode. Oh no, he broke it. No. Uh, go to object mode. So what, see it's still selected. So go right click, and go object mode. Yeah, and then select it, and now do it. There you go. Create another one. Now, before you do anything, see this little box right here? Go to the little corner, the tip of the corner. Now see what it changed? There, now drag out, drag it out. There you go, now you can see. Ten? No, eight. No, 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 no. Subdivision axes. Change that to eight. See where it's there you go. Now hit enter. Boom. See that change? And there you go. That's what you want. Every time you model with a cylinder, you've got five. Change it to eight. You want eight sides. You want to change things to eight sides. That's it. When it comes to a round object. Because we're about to get into subdivision surface, right? That's where you smooth something out, right? Now let me demo this to you. All right, so if I make a cylinder, boom, here it is, okay? Everyone see that? I'm going to make it eight sides. Bang, there you go, eight sides. Okay. I need it to sit on the ground as well. You see how it's sitting in the middle of that thing? And all, a lot of you have probably took it and moved it up, yes? But watch this. I can sit there and I can move it up, right? But how do I know if I'm getting it directly on the ground? So what I want to do is if I hold down D, you see that? It changes the position of where you can put the pivot point. Does everyone see that? 
So you see how you can move it up and down and you can manipulate that? Not in, not in component mode, object mode. You need to be in object mode. Okay? So, with the object in object mode, and I want to manipulate this pivot point, I want to snap it to the base of this object so I can snap it to the floor, right? Think about that. You want to snap the pivot to the base of the object so you can snap it to the base of the floor, right? This is where now I hold down D and I can sit here and I can place it at the bottom of the object, right? But how do I know it's going quite there, right? So if we take a look from the side view, there it is, right? So I can move it and here you go, right? But if I do this, watch, hold down D and then hold down V, I can snap it to the vertice on the bottom of the object. Everyone, please entertain me and snap to the base of the object. So hold down D, just drag it away, and let me see the snap. first and then hold down V and it will snap to the vertices. To do what? Eight. Um, see where it says 20? Turn it to eight. Did you snap it? Snap it to the top. Turn it. Alright, so now watch this. If I'm moving around, I'm like, I want it just to be on the top one. I can hold down D, then press V, and I can snap it there. Now I want to snap it here. I want to snap it there. I want to snap it there. Here. No, that's not what I want. I want to bring it back down. And I want to snap it right there, down at the bottom. That makes sense? Alright, cool. Now, why did I do that? Why did I snap it down at the bottom like this? So I can do this. Watch this. Without holding down D. D is for manipulating the pivot point. V will snap whatever you want to a vertice. X, on the other hand, will snap it to a grid. So watch this. If I'm below the surface right now, if I hold down just X, you see it change, and now boom, snapped it to the grid. Yes, sir. 
Say it again. I've also noticed that you can Yes. Just so you don't have to go in and start typing numbers, you just go D snap boom snap X boom right? So also, watch this. It means I can just hold down X and I can snap it here. Snap it here. Anywhere on this grid, I'm snapping it. Okay. Watch this. If I create a cube, let's Scale this cube up a little, and I'll bring it out over here. Watch this. Make a cube and pull it out over to the side. There you go. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. Everyone make a cube. Good. Now watch this. Select the cylinder again. Control D will duplicate your object. Right? See? If you hit press Control D, it will duplicate whatever you have selected. So now watch this. We got our pivot point down at the bottom. If I hold down V, just V by itself, watch. Boom. See that? I'm snapping it to the points on this object. Okay. See that? Very cool. Good, 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 good. So that's how you manipulate pivot points. Okay? That's how you can snap things from one thing to another. Very simple, very easy. Okay? Now, if I select an object like this, and I go control D and then I move it check this out I move it over two grid spaces and I just let go and then I shift D watch this okay So that's control D, copy it, then shift D. Okay, does that make sense? Yes? All right, good. Let's do this again, but we'll watch. Let's move our Q, uh, not cube, cylinder up like this. And now D and X together and snap it down here to the middle of the world, the pivot point. D, then hold down X and snap it to the center of the world. There you go. Everyone got that? Yes, 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 yes. Now, if I go into E, I can rotate from here. See that? But watch this. If I control D, duplicate it, move it out like this one time. Shift D, 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 shift D. 
Okay? See how this works? All you gotta know is the mechanics, then you can create. Understanding the simple mechanics. Yes, sir. Once you've done it once, control D, shift it. After you've done it once, then shift it. everyone got that? Okay. Good. So this means now when you want something to rotate from a certain point, you can, right? If you want things to rotate on its own object or from a vertice, you can. If you want something to rotate from its own from somebody else's pivot point or somebody else's vertice, you can. Very easy. Yes? How do you get like that? Say it again. How do you get like that? I'll demo this one more time. Okay, change it to 8, but I'm going to delete that because I always want it to be 8. So I'm going to come here, shift and right click, I'm going to go into a little square, change that to 8, hit apply, there we go, close it, no, forget the word extrude. Now I'm going to move it up, okay, watching, moving it up. Now I want to snap that pivot point to that zero, zero right here, okay. So I'm going to go D, and then I'm going to hold down X, and I'm going to snap it right here, okay. So do that, do that for me. Delete all that that's on your screen. Create a new one. Delete. And then delete that. Now, create a new one. Same. Move it up. Keep going. All the way up. Keep going. All the way up. Keep going. There you go. Let me take that you step through that.
right, lovely. Okay, everyone, delete what's on your screen. Now create another song. <laughs> go, go back into object mode. Right click, and then go object mode. Yeah, you don't. There you go. You don't need to hold anything down when you want to go into object mode. So just there you go. Now you see object. Now select all of them. Boom. So think of it like here's the object, and underneath the object are the components. So here's your house. Well, here's your car. Underneath the car, but like you can move the whole car, right? Underneath the car are the wheels, the gear stick, and all that. If you want to select them, then you've got to go into the components. Right? Okay. So, watch this. Now we're going to get into something called subdivision mode. So if I right click and I go into cylinder, there we go. There's my new cylinder, okay? I'm going to snap it onto the ground. So I'm gonna go here, D and V, snap it. And then I wanna snap it up onto the plane. Boom, there we go. I wanna make my cylinder just a little bit taller. So I'll do this, watch. I'll go here, right click, cylinder, Select the points. And I will move it up like so. Okay, so it grows the cylinder. There you go, perfect. Now, I want everybody, when I've done that, to hit three. Just hit three. Hit the number three. Okay, see what happened? Yeah, it turns into a barrel like that. Yeah, that's right. That is called a subdivision. Okay, that's when you're subdividing your model so you get a smooth object. Okay. Now hit one. Just hit the, hit the number one. See where, how it went back? That's polygon mode. Three is subdivision mode. So hit one, the numeric number one. No, don't hold down nothing, just hit one. So if you hit one, it goes back, okay? So three, one, three, one, three, one. Back and forth. But say I don't want this to subdivide like that. Like I said, I don't want it to crumple in on itself, right? I can do something like this. I can start to insert edges to hold the shape of the object. So these are called holding edges or locking loops. Okay, we call these locking loops. Now watch this. If I hold down shift and right click, I get this right here, insert edge loop. That means I can insert an edge, watch. Boom. Boom. Boom, yeah, insert edge loop. Shift, right click and you will go into insert edge loop mode. If you want to place it down here, the one at the bottom, not all the way, and one here at the top, not all the way. Say it again. Object mode. Uh, 
Almost that. Yes, nice. No, man. There you go. <laughs> go back to object mode. Now select your object. Now shift, right click, insert. Now click on this edge here. The dialog, yeah. See? Yeah. Click on here and then hold it down to the really left part. Ah, because you're holding down, ha ha! You're holding down shift as you're doing it. So it's going to follow the contours of the object and it's going to try to um, follow contours, so it's pushing it out. So if you don't hold down shift, you see how it does it? Just regularly? It gets that. Now, now that you've done that, hit three again. And watch what happens. You see how it holds the shape? Alright, that's cool. Click on that again. Now, you can even do it while you're in that mode. Oh, see that? cylinder that has nice light information. Object mode. There you go. Select it. Nice. Now, uh, nope. Shift and right click. Go into insert. There you go. Now, click and hold down. Just click on the edge and hold down. Nope, 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 nope. Take your hand off the shift. Click, no. Edge. You see that edge? Hold. Now click and hold down. And you click. And drag up. See how you can place it? Keep going. Right there. Stop. No, not all the way. Do it again. No. Nope. No. No, no, no. You guys have got to calm down when you're doing this clicking, right? It's a computer. You got to know every time you click and you start doing this, it's gonna it's gonna react to everything you do, right? So just take your time. Go on the edge, click on it, push it up, push it down. And there you go. Right? This is not like Space Invaders where you're just tapping on the button. Okay, got to make art this way. You got to be careful. Right, so if I hit three, you see that? Now, it doesn't really look like it's done much, but watch. If I select it, and I right click and I come down here to materials, assign favorite materials, I can put a fong on it. And now you see what the fong done? It added light. See that? Added a nice little highlight to it because that's a shiny material that is used for plastic, metals, and so on. Aluminum, aluminum, steel. Okay, so you just click on the object and you right click and you go material favorite fong. So if I select that object, and I go to my attribute window, there it is. There's my phone material. And I can adjust the color of it. I can make it darker. I can adjust the specular highlight. I can broaden that highlight so it's got a sheen like metal. 
Yes, sir. Say it again. Object mode. Click on it. Hit three. There you go. Now, while it's selected, right click. Come down here to assign favorite materials and select the mm -hmm. There you go. Now. Nope, nope, nope. So Thank you. 
doing it in real time sometimes. But it's connected, yeah. Yeah, so watch this. And then, you see that right there? That means you're still in that tool. You see how that tool is? Just click here. Now you're out of that tool. Now you see what it is. Yes, sir. Say it again. So you see how you still got this object still selected? You hit Q. Boom, it takes you out. And then you just here. Looks like it's already selected. And I don't know why you gotta do it twice, but it's kind of saying that you have to. What's up, man? How are you doing? Cool, cool. All right, so is everyone understanding that so yeah. far? Yo? Whoa! Uh, what's going on? Insanity Yeah, because I brought my tablet. Yeah. Uh, you know what, guys? I think it's something to do with... It's not doing it real time, it's not updating it to you. You could be a part of the software, right? So I think it just could be a simple bug in the software. So I want to show you one other basic kind of principle here when creating objects. Now you see when you go to your material how you have a ton of these little things up here. I see all this like stuff. That's from all the times you're adding action to your object. It's doing that. So if you want, what you can do, you're going to see something. I'm going to drag this out so you can see it. Right? I've got all this stuff going on with this object. Okay? All these little bars up here. If I hold down spacebar and go edit, delete, history, boom. There you go. There's the cylinder and there's the material. So it gets rid of all the other history, all the nonsense. Okay? Edit, delete, history. Okay? Did everyone get that? Hold down spacebar, edit, delete by type, no, history, there you go. Now, one other thing. Remember one of the students was saying how he had inserted something and basically it kind of screwed it, um, bowed it out a little. So if I come in here, object, and insert edge loop, and I hold down shift as I do it, watch what happens. Oh, wait, not much. 
Right? It should have bowed it out some. So it should have done this. But you can see, if you want, every time you insert an edge loop, it kind of keeps it selected for you. So you can then start creating certain objects. So I want to make a bottle. Okay. All right, this is how we make a bottle. See? Very simple. You can you can always take anything that you have on screen and start to manipulate it and boom. You're just pushing and pulling polys, scaling polys. How do you do that? <laughs> I'll show you the game. Okay? All right, I'll start from scratch. But all you're doing is in certain edges where you start to see topology start to curve or move in your object. Yes? So make a vase, make a bottle, right? Yeah, I'll do it again. I'll start from scratch. kind of make it into a subdivision model, right? So that way you get these proper highlights and things, right? If you don't do that, then what happens is it stays flat like that. You see how that's flat? Soon as I, soon as I hit three, watch how it starts to get the shine on there, yeah? Okay? Major difference. This is what we want for normal maps, okay? So watch. All right, there we go. There's my cylinder again. Now from here, now that I have that, I can insert an edge and as soon as I let go, I can move rotate or scale so I'll scale in okay there you go right there's a vase Okay, the hole at the top, all I done, select, go faces, and then hold down tab, and then drag around like this, so you can select the faces, and then hit D, and that will delete them. Okay, so you can poly select as well. So I can basically go hold down tab, and I can just select faces. I can paint my selection. Okay. 
I'm going to have a couple of, uh, of dots, uh, tutorials up here for you for this week for homework. So what I'm going to do is go through the videos and then write some notes down like on the basics of what he's talking about. And then post, make a, add a card with your name on it in homework and then post your notes in there. Watch the video, take notes. The way you learn. You've got to get all three things, right? All three senses. You've got to get your know, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. You want to engage all three of them. You want everybody to do that? Yeah, if you want. Yeah, I, I, I know you may not do something like that. But I will have um, another, I'll have another set of videos up here for that right? Advanced students, if you kind of already know this stuff and you're like, ah, that, that's, I don't want to do this, I will have a set of uh, tutorials up there for you guys. So it will take you to the next step of modeling, okay? And then for the beginner guys, you will have 26 of those little videos. Take note, then I'm going to have some videos for you to create like silly little things like this, like little wine glasses, bottles. Okay. All right. Now you see, look, I have this, yeah? If I go back to one, that's the shape. Okay. That's the shape right there. I know every time I hit three, I'm subdividing that shape. Boom. Anywhere where I want it to crease the edge means I want it to stay sharper to the original um, polygons, right? So if I was to, let's say, go edge mode and insert edges and go here and here, it means now down at the bottom there will be a crease in my mesh. Boom. See that? See how I manipulated that? Okay. It means I can jump back and forth and model this way. Watch. Say I want to add a lip to this. There's my lip. Yep. There you go. See? There's a lip. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, if you see your fellow students struggling, help them out. The edge, double click the edge, the opening of it. Yeah. Okay, so click off, just click. Now double click the opening edge. Double click. Now shift, right click, extrude. And then pull it in on the. No, 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 that's the scale. The yellow, the yellow, click the yellow. There you go. Don't, don't move it in so fast, right? You guys, be gentle with these mouse clicks and these sudden crash moves, right? <laughs> this is, this is can't even explain, right? But you just don't go there. Done. Well, you take time, move it in. Be gentle. You're an artist, apparently.
Click will select the whole entire ring. Yes, sir. Nice face. Nice face. Awesome. All right. Uh, so yes. Um, hit. Uh, select your object. So just yes. Uh, so go into object mode. So yeah. I'll leave it and then click on it again. Now. Uh, zoom in on. Now, guys, when you start working in this program and you want to do things, don't do this. I see too much of this right now. now all I'm seeing is this. Well, I want to make something up here at the top, right? And then you're doing this. So how do I do that? Well, for one, get it on the screen, right? Be where you're about to model. Show, let you help you, right? 
if you're going to make something, you've got to be able to see where it's at. So you've got to go there. Okay? So go to the top of the model. And I'm going to show you. Go to the top of the model. And if you want to add like a little bevel edge or lip to this, like right here, what I'm going to do is I will hit, I will hit one. Okay. Then I will come in and go insert edge. I'll insert a little edge right here. I will go back to face mode. And then here's the thing. If you click on one face, and then hold down shift and tap, double tap on the next face, it will loop the edge loop for you. Then I can extrude out again. There you go. All right, select it, three, and then there's another edge. See that? So in your case, double click that edge. No, you don't have to do that. Watch this. Hey, guys, if you want to select an edge loop, all you have to do is just double tap. You don't have to click every single edge. All right, you can come in, edge mode, double tap. Okay? And that will select that. If you want to do it to faces, come into face mode. Select the face, double tap. There you go. Say it again. Uh, well, like just just experiment. Double click your edge. Double click the edge, and then go into extrude edge. Right. Save. Nah, no need to save. Unless you're really attached to it. the very principles of modeling. This is what I first modeled years ago. It was a bottle. And I made a Coke bottle and so on and so on. But we will progress even more. All right? Hopefully by the end of next week we'll be making a crate. All right? Very good. I will see you guys next week. Homework will be up there. It's already there. And I'm going to put up there a little extra assignment for making bottles and glasses like this. Okay? I want you to follow along, make it, take screenshots, and put it in your card. Okay? And follow along with the basics as well. Uh, in advance, I will uh, put something up there for you guys, yeah? Right, cool. Very nice. Nice, nice, nice session. A flash drive? Uh, no, 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 no. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't save these files on Trello. You'll blow it up. Yeah, just save it on, uh, on like your Google Drive or um, something of that nature.